Alrighty, howdy everyone. Um, we'll get started. How are we feeling this week? Good, great, awesome. Um, okay, everyone saw their exam grade at this point? Yes, okay. Um, the answer key should be um, released as soon as I get them done. Um, so just bear with me on that one. Um, and I think all that's left is your final. You have one more quiz and then your final. Um, so you're in the home stretch. Yay. Um, any questions for me before we get started? Yeah. Uh, what do you mean by that? Like, what, what do you mean? Uh, wait, 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 wait. The, um, the answer keys will be released. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I thought there was two. There might, uh, there's one or two. I don't remember the syllabus off the top of my head. Um, I think there might be two quizzes left and then your final. Um, but either way, you're almost done. We're over the halfway. <laughs> Anything else? Alrighty, what do we want to see today? Who's got questions? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So when we talk about enthalpy, what does enthalpy mean? Yeah, that's a change. And what do we usually focus on with our change with? Yeah. Right, it's going to be our change in heat. And how do we define heat? What's the letter that we use for heat in this class? Q. Yep. Okay, Q is going to be our heat. So what equations do we know with Q? What have we learned so far? Yep. So we have Q is equal to MC delta T. What is... M here. Awesome. What unit is mass in? in? Grams. What is C? This is your specific heat. Does anyone know what unit those are in? It's like joules times degrees Celsius, I think. Or joules per Celsius, it's joules per Celsius. Joules per degree Celsius. This could also be kilojoules per degree Celsius, but some sort of energy, some sort of joule, and then degree Celsius. And what is delta T? This is your change in temperature. How do we write change? T final minus T initial. Does it matter what unit your temperature is in? It actually doesn't matter for this one usually. Um, right, if we look at um, T initial is zero degrees Celsius and T final is 25 degrees Celsius, what's our change in temperature here? This is 25 degrees. But what if we had T initial is 273 and T final is 298? What's our change here? Also 25. Right, here it's 25 degrees Calvin's difference, but it doesn't really matter. Both of them are 25 because we're changing by that plus 273. So in this case, your T final minus T initial does not matter if it's in Kelvin or Celsius, you can use um, Either or, just make sure that they're both in the same. If you're given, right, one is at zero degrees Celsius and the other one's at 298 Kelvin, don't do 298 uh, minus zero. Any questions on Q is equals MC delta T? When do we usually use this? What's an example? Or what's like a problem? Yeah. Calibrometry. Yeah, calorimetry. So... Calorimetry, I don't know. Um, right, calorimetry. So this is something, right? You can say a bomb calorimeter is sometimes what you see. Um, this is like your styrofoam cup. Um, any sort of thing like that. You can also have this for your heating curves.
Does anyone know what a heating curve? Everyone recognizes that. What heating curve is? Um, or at least that the name heating curve. Um, heating curve is going to be this guy. Where this is. This is Richard. On this graph here, where are we going to use Q is equal to MC delta T? Yeah, awesome, right? So whenever there's a change in temperature. So any of those diagonal lines is where we're going to use our um, Q is equal to MC delta T. So here, we're going to use Q is equal to MC delta T here and here. What phase are we at, at that first diagonal line at the origin? We're at solid here. What about our second diagonal line? We're liquid. And what about the third diagonal line? That's gonna be gas. So what happens on the horizontal lines? Equilibrium. And so what do we call that between a gas and a liquid? What do we? That's a phase change, awesome. So here's gonna be a phase change. And here's gonna be a phase change. So the important thing to note with Q is equal to MC delta T on your heating curves, your C or your specific heat for each component here is gonna be different depending on the state or the phase that your compound is in. So for water, there's three different specific heats, one for the solid phase, one for the liquid phase, and one for the gaseous phase. Um, water is the 4.1, I believe it is. And then uh, I think gas is like 2.18. So, right, they are different. You can't interchange them. Um, so that should be either given to you in your question or that's what you're going to be solving for. If either one of those is not given to you and you're not solving for it and you just need to have it known, um, those are standard. So you can look those up and you can use them for your homework or um, something else. But for the most part, they will be given to you in the question um, that you can use directly. Any questions on? the heating curve and Q is equal to MC delta T. Alrighty, what other heat equations do we use? Yep. Make sure I have the right one. I can't find what I've looked before. Well, what we do know, yeah, here. Um, I think the one I'm thinking of, it might be the different one than what you said, but the delta E is equal to Q plus W. I think that's a different one from what you said, but this one is still applicable. Right, so this is going to be the heat transferred between your system and surroundings. And then this is going to be the work done 
by or on the system. The important thing to note with uh, this equation here is that Q is going to be the heat transfer between um, your system and surroundings. Work is always based off of the system, right? So the system is either doing work or the system is either getting work done to it. Um, so that's just important to note based off of what's happening in your question. Does everyone remember this equation? So I don't understand how it works in terms of heat transfer out or in. If work is, sorry, if heat is being put into the system, is that a positive Q or a negative Q? Positive. That's going to be positive, right? So heat going in is positive Q. Therefore, equal and opposite heat going out is negative Q. If work is being done on this system, what W is it? Work done on the system. Positive, yep. So work done on the system. It's positive work. So that means that work done by the system, what is that? Negative work. If you need to think of or need something like real life of how you can remember uh, W, I always think of this as like getting my hair cut, um, right? Usually I feel better about myself after I get my hair cut because work was done on me. Um, so that's positive work. And then opposite, if I'm doing work, I feel tired afterwards, right? Going to the gym, I feel tired afterwards. So that's negative work because I myself put the work in. Whereas I got my hair cut, someone else did work on me. Any questions about um, delta E, Q, and W? Okay. What other equations do we have with Q? Um, isn't there one that's like negative Q? Yes, I think that might that might be what you were talking about earlier. Um, so negative Q of the we said element is equal to Q cal plus Q water, right? Like system, like mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So Q element is just the thing that it's not, right? So your system is usually the reaction that's happening. And so your surroundings is everything else. So, right, in order for that reaction to happen as a system, that needs either a negative or positive Q. So your surroundings, everything else will get the opposite Q. Yep. Great question. And so what they mean by element, they're like the reaction happening is what is going to be here. Any other questions or any other equations that we know of with Q? Not entirely Q, but I'll still put it out there. Um, or I guess it is Q. Um, going back to our heating curves, we have our phase changes. What do we use there in order to determine the heat or energy required? Yes, yep. So there's two ways that you can see this. Q here is going to be equal to M times the delta H of fusion. Or this could be, or up top is Q is equal to M times the delta H of vaporization. Um, 
you think of Q is equal to M times the delta H of vaporization, that's the heat of vaporization, what is required to boil or vaporize your liquid, right? You're going from a liquid to a gaseous phase. So think about boiling water, um, right? You're vaporizing, that kind of makes sense. For your um, phase change of solid to liquid, this is also your melting point, but this is also your condensing point, or not condensing, um, freezing point. So when I think of delta H of fusion, I think of my liquid uh, particles forming an ice cube. And so they're fusing together, forming that ice cube. So you're going from liquid to solid for fusion, but that's going to be the equal and opposite of your melting point of solid to liquid. Okay, you can see it as M, where M here is going to be mass. Or you could see it as Q is equal to N delta H of fusion. The only thing that's changing here is the units. N here is going to be moles. Okay, so mass would be in grams, moles would be in moles, obviously. Um, so that would change the value of your delta H of fusion. So be careful of that when you're reading your questions. If delta H of fusion is given to you in joules per, or per gram, then you want to use your mass. If you're given to it in joules per mole, then you want to use your mole. Does that make sense, the distinction between the two of them? Um, sometimes, right, they will give you one or the other, right, they'll give you it in, um, your delta H of fusion is in joules per mole, um, but they give you a gram or a mass in order to start off with it. So you need to transfer that gram to moles by using the molar mass. So just watch out for those questions. I think those are the big ones with Q. If anyone else can think of something else. Okay, do you want to practice a little bit of this stuff? Yeah. Let's do it. All right, so we have a chunk of copper weighing 30 or 25.3 grams originally at 87.77 degrees Celsius is dropped into a cup of water at 33 degrees Celsius. The final temperature is 36.3. How much heat is transferred to the water? And we're given the specific heat of copper. We wanna try this one together or work on it through our own. Together. 
I'll give you all a minute. If someone does want to start on their own, go ahead. Um, then we'll do this. Alrighty, so what do we know from this question? What two things do we have working? What's gonna be our system and what's gonna be our surroundings? The copper is our system. And then what is our surroundings? The water, right? So we know that Q system has to equal negative Q surroundings. We said that our Q system is Q copper. That has to equal negative Q surroundings. Or our water. What is happening to the copper? It starts at 87 and where does it end up? At 36. So is heat gained or lost by the copper? It's lost, awesome, right? So is that gonna be a negative Q or a positive Q? It'll be a negative Q, right? We're losing heat to our surroundings. So what is our surroundings or our water doing? It's heating up, right? Great. Okay, so what what do we know? How can we, what do we give, or what are we given in our question that will help us? We're given the specific heat of copper, right? Because what equation are we going to be using? Yep, Q is equal to mc delta t so are we given m yep what is m awesome this is 25.3 are we given c yep are we given delta t yes. yeah we are right so we can solve we can solve for this we can say that q is equal to 25.3 um, grams times 0 0.385 joules over grams times degrees Celsius. What's our T initial? 87. And so what's our T final? 36. Right, when we set it up this way, our T final minus T initial is going to give us a negative delta T. That would make our whole Q negative. Did we expect Q to be negative? Yes, we did, right? We said it's losing heat, it should be a negative Q. So that's a good check to make sure that you set up your um, equation correct. So if we plug that into our calculator, I get Q is equal to negative 501.34 joules. And we said that the Q of copper is equal to the negative Q of water. So if the Q of copper is equal to 501.34, and that's the negative Q of water. What do our negative signs do? They're going to cancel. So the Q of water is equal to 501.34 joules. How many sig figs would we need for this question? Three. Where does three come from? Yeah, it comes from a couple spots, right? We have three sig figs in our mass. We have three sig figs in our um, final temperature and then the initial temperature of our water. Okay, so overall, the heat transferred is 501 joules. Okay, what questions do we have? Um, the exam will probably, I think, is multiple choice. 
um, is on multiple choice. And so the only way that they would have to like round is that if they give you, right, they gave you 500, 501, 501.3, 501.34, then you would have to take it that way. What other questions do we have on this one? Does this make sense how we use Q and Q system versus Q surroundings? Yes. Right, sorry, these are kind of long. But for this question here, we have a 0 0.445 gram sample of an organic compound that is burned in a bomb calorimeter, and the temperature increases from 22.5 degrees Celsius to 28.75 degrees Celsius. The calorimeter contains 1.25 times 10 to the third grams of water, and the bomb has a heat capacity of 900 joules per Celsius. How much heat is transferred to the surroundings? Alrighty, what thoughts do we have about this one? Where were we gonna start? Yes, yep, yep. So overall, what we're gonna look at is, right, Q surroundings, it's gonna be equal to Q of the bomb plus Q of the water. Right, and remember always 
Q of the surroundings is equal to uh, negative Q of the system. So is it negative uh, bond plus one? Um, in th this case, the original like equation, I think it is, is negative Q of the system is equal to Q bond plus Q water. So we subbed in Q surroundings right off the bat. Right, it's originally negative Q system is equal to Q bomb plus Q water. So we said that Q surrounding is equal to negative Q system. And so we just plug that in. Right, because we're originally, we're, the question asked for the heat of the surroundings. Okay, so overall we're gonna use Q surroundings is Q bomb plus Q water. How are we gonna break up Q bomb and Q water? What do those break down into? Mm -hmm. So for water, Q is equal to M of the water, C of the water times the Delta T. And what about our bomb? What is that Q? Just Good. Good, right, so for the bomb calorimeter, it's just the specific heat times the T. The C that you're given is that 900 um, joules per degree Celsius. And did I give you, I didn't, you need that. Um, but your specific heat of water is 4.184 joules per gram times degree Celsius. So the value of 900 already has that mass times the specific heat are, uh, values already multiplied together. So that's why the gram is not in that unit because it's already canceled out and already taken accounted for. Whereas the specific heat of water has that gram component in the denominator, we need to still take that value into account. Questions so far with what equations we're using? All right, so let's plug this in. So we have, we have Q surroundings is going to be Q bomb. We said it's the C of the bomb. What is the C? What's our value for this uh, specific heat of the calorimeter? 900. What's our delta T? And how'd we get 6.25? Mm -hmm. Right, T final is going to be uh, 28. And our T initial is 22.5 because we increased from 22.5 to 28.75. So that two uh, temperature is going to be our final. And we started at 22.5. That takes care of Q of the bomb. And then we have our mass. How much does our water weigh? Mm -hmm. Yep, so this is 1.25 times 10 to the third, or 1,250 grams of water. We're given our specific heat. <laughs> and does our delta T change for water? No, it's still the same stuff, right? Your reaction is that organic compound that's being um, burned. Um, your water in your cup or your water in your bomb are gonna be the things that are your surroundings in your system. Um, and your system is your organic compound. These stay the same. I have no idea what this is. Um,
So I got this is 56 to 5 plus. What units do our values have here? Yep, these are both in joules. So overall, we get Q surroundings. Equal to 383.125 joules, which is also 38.3. These do take some time, um, but the more you practice with them, the more you'll see, okay, that's something that I need to know or that's something that I need to know. Um, but mostly, right, if it says bomb calorimeter, most of the time you're going to be doing something like this to set it up first. So they get repetitive um, the more like jargon you learn or your calorology questions. Yes. So... If you are talking about this system, then yes, but we're talking about the surroundings here. So because your surroundings are increasing in temperature, we're expecting a positive Q. Yep. But your system or uh, the organic compound that's being burned, that would have the negative Q. Great question. So that value, so when you're negative, that's when you're the Q reaction of the Yes, yep, yep. So negative 38.3 kilojoules is the Q system, which is equal to the Q reaction. Uh, if we were looking for only the Q reaction and not the conditions, we have like the mass and the nutrition, but the temperature change is important for the metal for like the organic compound. Right? Yes. Yep. Yep. Perfect. Any other questions on this one? Just help a little bit with the calorimetry, seeing the words and getting it written out. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't really, I don't know if there's like a certain convention or whatever. It's just how you want to think about it. Um, it also, so you can switch it depending on what's happening, right? How you like to work with negative values. Um, if I read the question, I'm like, oh, my system is losing heat, right? Then I'm going to say, okay, if my system's losing heat, then that's going to be my negative Q. So then my negative negative cancels out. And so that makes it positive right off the bat. So, and that's just with practice, how you can do that. Um, so you can define it how you want to, whatever's going to be easiest for you that way. But in any case, however you set it up, if something is losing temperature, then it's losing heat. And so that should be your negative Q when you answer your question. Yep. Great question. Anything else? Is the formula a negative Q system equals Q bomb plus Q water provided? Um, I don't think so. I think you need to know these ones. Um, so I would just, my um, biggest suggestion for this unit, for chapter nine specifically, is to look at your notes and go through and write down any equation that you see in yellow or that you had to write down, um, and then just make a formula sheet for yourself. And then you can have that to look after uh, when you're doing your homework and stuff. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Right. You could say change it around. Right. I could ask you just for the surroundings. Um, yep. Right. I could ask you for um, the system based off of right. You're given the gram so I could give you a different specific heat or something like that. You could solve for it that way, too. Um, yeah, I just gave you what you needed to solve for this one. Anything else? Okay. 
Um, any other questions based off of Q or just in general? Is that where we're struggling most? Um, we'll do one more question with the heating curve. Um, So for this question, we have a sample of water, which I'm giving you is 1.25 kilograms. At room temperature, which is 22 degrees Celsius, is boiled completely. And I want to know how much heat is required to do this. So what type of question is this one? Like yeah, equilibrium, right, heating curve type question, right? You need to know where you are within your heating curve. So if we draw, one thing that I like to do for these types of questions is draw a little, uh, a little heating curve for myself. And I can, and where are we starting, right? I mark where we're starting. Mm -hmm. Liquid room temperature? Yeah, liquid room temp, right? What temp does water boil or melt, or sorry, freeze or melt at? It starts at zero, right? That's when it freezes or melts. And then where does it boil? Boils at 100. So if we think about 22, that's going to be probably like here, right? We're going to starting here. If we're boiling completely, where do we end? We end at delta H vaporization, but where along the line? Are we right at the first corner of our horizontal line or the second corner? Mm -hmm. The second one, right? We have to go all the way to our second one in order to boil completely off all of our water. So we need this portion here and we need this portion here. So what two equations are we using? Yep, so we can use Q1, which is MC delta T. And what do we use for horizontal? Yep, so, so Q is going to be equal to what units is our delta H vaporization in? kilojoules per mole so is it going to be m or n in front of our n yep n delta h vaporization and then you can just add those two q's up right once they're both heats then they can both be added up 
So Q total is equal to Q1 plus Q2, which is MC delta T plus N delta H and vaporization. Is this enough to get you started and try and finding a Q on your own? Let's do that and we'll reconvene in a couple minutes as I also get the answer. Um, what do you think? Mm -hmm. yeah. What units is delta H in? It's kilojoules per mole. Yep. So are you getting moles anywhere? And no. So N is going to be your moles, like like in PV equals to NRT, mm. right? So can you get to moles? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and let's give our answers in kilojoules as our final answer. Yes. Like the final answer you just gave us joules. Um, it'll be joules or kilojoules, depending on the um this heat and like the unit used or the substance used. Right. So for water, that has a pretty high vaporization and a pretty high um, specific heat. So this one is usually kilojoules, but something might have a lower specific heat. So then it doesn't take as much heat. So then it's just joules. But it's always going to be some sort of. <laughs> it's, um... What did you do? That would be right. 
Yep. So the uh, Delta H of authorization that I gave you yeah. here is in kilojoules per mole. So they took that heat of vaporization in joules or kilojoules per gram and just used the molar mass of that compound to get to kilojoules per mole. So it's just an interchange just for you to convert it between the two of them. So if they gave you, right, if they gave you the mass, it would just be a different numerical value at the beginning, but it would just be difference of a or mass. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, after grading your exams, I found it would be best to do unit conversions again with some molar masses. Make sure you can always use them. All right. The final going to be like the same like difficulty as like the exams? Um, so I would say, I would say it's pretty similar because you do, it's, I think, Last time I taught this, I think it was 40 multiple choice for two hours. Um that might that might have been the the 117 or the 119 lecture, whatever that is. Um that might have been that I might be mistaken. Um but I would say take your hardest short answer and your easiest multiple choice, and they'll find the medium between the two of them. So I don't think like any of your multiple choices are going to be as hard as the empirical formula question that you had. Um, <laughs> it's, um, yeah, sure. <laughs> I, I had to grade that one. That took me a while to get through. Um, yes. But there was a lot of partial credit given. <laughs> um, and then like your short answer or your multiple choice, I think there was... Mm, like the ionization energy question. I think if y'all had that one, that one's probably an easier one because it's just a trend. So probably a little bit different between, probably a little bit harder than that, but easier than the empirical formula one. Think of um, like the short answer multiple choice that you're doing kind of, that's kind of like your standard. It's all multiple choice. Thing. I think it's all multiple choice. Um, <laughs> Don't don't quote me on that because I don't think any of you are degree candidates. Uh, so we do have a little bit extra time to grade them, but I think easiest for us if it's almost multiple choice. <laughs> All righty. Um, let's figure out this. Did anyone get an answer? What do you get? Awesome. Yeah, that's what I got. Okay, great. So we're either both wrong or both right. Um, <laughs> so how we go about solving this one. All right, our Q total is going to be Q1 plus Q2, which we said was MZ delta T plus delta, uh, N delta H vaporization. So I gave you this one specifically because nothing is in the same units. Um, so for MC delta T, we have to first convert 125 kilojoules or kilojoules, kilograms kilojoules. 1,000 kilograms to um, one gram. Wow. 1,000 grams is equal to one kilogram. That's it. So this is 1,250 1, grams. 
our delta C or our C is given to us directly. Um, so this is joules over grams times degrees Celsius. And then our uh, delta T is going to be final minus initial. We're starting at 22, so that's initial, and our final is um, 100. So this will be 100 degrees Celsius minus 22 degrees Celsius. Q2 is N, I know. Q2 is N times the delta H of vaporization. N is in moles. So we're given 1,250 grams of water. So we have to convert that into moles. And we have 18.02 grams is equal to one mole of H2O. Get rid of this. This is 69.37 moles of water. And then our delta H of vaporization is given to us in kilojoules per mole. So those units match and we can cancel that out there. Now, if we look at each Q individually, your grams and your Celsius is going to cancel out, leaving you just with joules on your Q1. But then your moles of your uh, moles times delta H of vaporization will cancel out, leaving you with kilojoules. So you're going to be left with 407940 joules and something in joules and something in kilojoules. You cannot directly add both of these, right? These are off by a magnitude. So since I asked you to give it to you or to give your answer in kilojoules, I would convert your joules into kilojoules. So this here. And so when we add this up, we end up with three, two, three. Oh, sorry. This many chemicals. which is a lot. This was a, this would be if like you put a pot of water and then just let it evaporate instead of actually putting something in it on your stove. So that's a lot of heat. It would also take a long time. All right, any questions on heating curves here? So you could have a heating curve where you start, you know, all the way down here in your in your freezer, right? I can take a sample out of the minus 80 at negative 80 degrees Celsius, and then I can put it on the heating block at 120 degrees Celsius, and it would go all the way from minus 80 to zero through the phase change up to 100 to, again, another phase change, and then up to 120 degrees Celsius. Um, so that would be five different cues that you would have to go through, um, which is a lot, but yeah. So like those cues and phase changing, how do you determine which formula to use? Yep. So for all of your diagonals, you're going to be using Q is equal to MC delta T. Um, you'll just have to change the C depending on if it's liquid or gaseous um, or solid. And then for the horizontals, you're either going to be using the Q delta H of vaporization or Q delta H of fusion, depending on if it's melting or if it's evaporating. This should be given. This should be given. Yep. 
Any other questions on Q? All righty, well, that is 6.32, so we can wrap it up there for today. Thanks for coming. Please let me know if you have any other questions in the meantime. Um, yeah. I'll see you next week. Yeah.